All right, can it finally be accepted reality that this kind of crap is written by AI? I mean, is it not? I had to say crap at the beginning of this video for YouTube monetization purposes. The AI bot really hates it when you swear in the first few seconds of your video. That said, we're more than a few seconds in now. So what the fuck, man? So in this time of MCU phase four and five, otherwise known as post Endgame MCU DLC, we now have the Marvels. Captain Marvel, Monica Rambo, and Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, they all team up and something happens to where when one uses their powers, they'll swap with the other one. And I gotta say, when I saw the first trailer for the Marvels, which heavily concentrated on that mechanic, I was like, that could be fun. I don't know that that mechanic had to be some super big budget MCU monstrosity. I mean, you could have had an indie film with that premise and that would have been fun. That would have been fine. Everything everywhere, swapping around. Working title, but you get what I mean. That simple premise of fun just feels like it's in something that's overproduced and inflated. Then when I saw the second trailer that just looked like generic big budget MCU space adventure nonsense, I was like, there it is. I gotta give props and credit where credit's due. Iman Vellani, who plays Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, I thought she was great. In fact, she was the screen presence in the entire film. I've not seen Miss Marvel, so this is my introduction to her, but I have heard she's great in Miss Marvel, and I do get it after seeing this. She has an endearing quality to her. It might actually be real life bleeding over onto the screen. A fangirl who's now playing in the sandbox she once dreamed about playing in. It works. She was actually the heart of the movie. There's a whole Captain Marvel, Monica Rambo connection that's supposed to be heartfelt. It, I mean, it was there. You're gonna hear me say that a lot in here, I feel. Well. That was there. Guess we should talk about that. Carol Danvers, Monica Rambo. They have this connection of the past and there are times you feel like, oh, hey, that it's, it's kind of getting there. Maybe it does more than I'm giving it credit here, but it's really hard for those emotional moments to come through when the movie that's built around it is crap. Actually, to be fair, I thought there was a really good scene dealing with Monica Rambo's emotional past. Uh, when they all put on the Demolition Man headpieces. I thought that was good. The Monica Rambo Carol Danvers dynamic landed a lot better than the Carol Danvers villain dynamic. Monica Rambo, for the most part, I was like, what is it you do here? Such a bummer because during and after WandaVision, I was interested as to where they were gonna take that character. By the end, her entire character was relegated to just being a MacGuffin. But all in all, I saw Captain Marvel, I saw WandaVision, I've never seen Miss Marvel, and Miss Marvel, I thought was the best character of the three. As for the villain in this movie, Darben. Don't know much about the character from the comic books. Looked up a little bit before I started doing the review. Didn't do a big deep dive or anything. But from what I read, it sounds like it would have been really easy to take this new villain, just turn this new character into dollar store Ronan the Accuser or something. And that's exactly what they did. The villain in this movie is the absolute worst. And that's in the MCU. That's saying something. The kind of impressive where they had to try to fuck it up this badly. I feel like the conversation was no deeper than, we want Ronan the Accuser back. But I've been told he's been dead in the MCU for years now. Plus character development just takes up screen time. We want to pull this baby back to under two hours. Hear me out on this one. Like Ronan, pretty much him. Only a woman this time. Because that's all the development you need. Oh, I know. Genius. I know. Thank Brilliant. you. It just comes to me. Really? By the way, you see that bullshit South Park episode? <laughs> I mean, Don't get me started. how wrong can you get it? And I feel like I should clarify, given the mechanics of the MCU multiverse, this isn't supposed to be a female variant of Ronan, like Sylvia's to Loki. This is just a new villain. The villain and the dynamic between Carol Danvers and villain on paper probably sounded great. Like in concept, in my mind, I could just see a layout where it's like, yeah, that sounds awesome. In execution, it doesn't feel like there is any dynamic. The character development's not there. We're being told this, we're being told that. All the while, it just feels like batty doing batty things and they gotta stop batty. There's, ah. Uh... Spoilers, I can't do it here. I can't talk about it here. If I give two fucks enough to do a spoiler talk video, I'll do that. You feel like there's a whole movie of setup before this movie that you should have watched that never happened. Oh God, is that just set up for a prequel series on Disney Plus? I wouldn't doubt it. The villain even has Ronan's hammer, but after Ronan put the power stone in it, so the power stone made it really powerful. It's like this villain has that version of the hammer with the power stone, but without a power stone. I was like, is there a power stone out there I'm not aware of? Granted, she does have a magical relic device that seems to be acting through the hammer. 
But is that is that just what happens with the hammer? Any magical relic or device that acts through the hammer just acts one way? Anything going through the hammer just acts like the purple infinity stone? It doesn't come across as a continuity thing. It comes across as a we don't know how to do anything new or different thing. So that covers the characters. Is that it? Wait, there's more. The CGI in the movie, there's a lot going on in the action sequences, whether it's a lot of CGI or characters swapping places because they're using their powers, which is kind of intermittent. There were definitely moments where I was like, the character used her powers and she didn't swap. And why didn't she swap? Sometimes a little bit of power will make them swap. Sometimes they need to use more powers but they don't always swap and it never explains why. Not like we live in what's known as the digital age in which all you have to worry about is the internet picking apart your inconsistency. So sometimes the action sequences just look like CGI. But when you had a still moment, nothing distracting you, you got to zero in on the CGI. Oh yeah, that was noticeable. There are a couple of dumb ass side quests. Not only does this movie generally feel like a tech demo for gameplay mechanics. Yeah, you swap places with other characters, gameplay mechanic. You know how every sandbox game has that mission where you're like, this is goofy. This is some ridiculous shit. But every game gets one. This isn't a game, but it still gives us one. It's fucking weird. Actually, no, there's two. There are, there are two side quests that are absolute ridiculous bullshit. I'll be vague, but I'll talk about them here. There's this one planet they go to in which people just sing to talk to people. If you just talk to them, they can't understand you. You have to sing to them. I was like, this would be fine in an episode of DuckTales or something. Launch Pad McQuack flies Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey, and Louie to this other land where people sing when they talk. At the very least, speak Walla Walla Bing Bang. Disney afternoon, baby. In an MCU movie, it just felt like someone trying to recapture that Taika Waititi energy, but Thor Love and Thunder Taika Waititi energy? It was fucking ridiculous. Another one, uh, keeping this one vague, it has to do with cats, and it's dumb as shit too. And these two comedy bits just feel out of place in this movie. Makes the movie feel tonally inconsistent. But in the end, the real question is, what is this movie about? What's the plot? No, the plot is not the characters when they use their powers, swap places with each other. That's a mechanic, not the plot. The plot, I don't fucking know either. The baddie's doing baddie things and needs to be stopped. It's a very simple ass plot. It's another high budget grade B film, but it, it lacks the camp and cheese element that would make it a cult classic 20 years from now. But Iman Vellani was really good in the movie. She has this infectious optimism. You feel like it's not the character that's having the time of her life. She is. That doesn't always land with me. It does with her. Go forth and prosper, kid. You were the best one in this film. The rest of the movie feels like an exercise in complacency and a testament to the fact that the MCU needs to take a break. Like take a couple years, make people miss you, regroup, reassess, reevaluate, come back in a couple years and crush it. Don't give us more of this. I say that because this is, generally speaking, what they give now. Movies that you're not gonna remember in T minus one day. Yeah, how the fuck did we get here? It's under two hours. That's nice. Yeah, there's a mid credit scene. Go ahead and stay for that so you can see more bad CGI. I heard there's a post credit scene, but it sounds pretty useless to me. Okay, The Marvels, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your least favorite MCU movie or MCU villain? Whatever they are, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. Woof.